Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for tea time today. We have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. Clean, refreshing, so good, so good guys. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever you have over there. Maybe something harder as I always say, depends on what part of the planet you're on, right? Today is going to be a Starlink day. We've had a couple of these lately and today is going to be another one. I'm going to be answering a few questions that a brand new subscriber had and the questions were really detailed. And I think that if I answered the questions in the comment area below the video, I don't think that would be helpful for all the rest of you. So these were really good questions. So I figured I would share the answers with everyone. So this is gonna be a little bit geeky, a little bit deep in some of the stuff. So if it's a little bit much, then move on to the next video. I do have that Starlink playlist. So there's a lot of stuff that have to do with Starlink. If you're here for that, just go to that playlist and you can watch a bunch of videos I put together, how to's, all type of setups and whatnot. All right. If you're here for a photo, video, or just simply tech and nothing to do with Starlink, then this is probably not going to be your video, but maybe networking is your thing. And this might even prove to be helpful for that. So before I get into these few questions, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. You can go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. They're free just for you being here. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. So this comment starts out like this. Thank you for all of your videos. Well, you're very welcome. Subscribe to the channel as you have such great content. You flatter me. Thank you. I am relatively new to networking, so I will try to ask my question the best way I can. I guess my main desire is that I want to assign static internal IPs to all of my important devices in my home. POE camera, that is a power over ethernet camera, usually outdoors. A lot of people use them to be able to monitor things as well as a NAS server he has on here. That's similar to Harley that we have over there, that Unraid server, a NAS server, as well as the main computers. For the non-important items such as cell phones and laptops, etc., I am not overly concerned with static IP assignment for those. I do have a TP-Link TL-SG1016 PE managed switch. A little bit different than the one I have, but it's going to be very similar. Most managed switches from TP-Link, the software internal to them is very, very similar. He continues by saying, I do not take full advantage of anything in the software other than QoS settings, mostly for my main computer to maintain the most data throughput. QoS settings basically is your quality of service. It allows you to data shape. So you could say this computer is prioritized over all the rest. So if it needs the data, it gives it to it in comparison to all of the lesser computers. So if you have a main computer like what I'm using here in the studio and I don't want anything else to interrupt me in my managed switch using QoS, I would assign this computer as having priority over all the rest. And that's what he's using it for. He says, I also have a basic TP-Link wireless router that I am currently using for Wi-Fi for phones as well as the thermostat and whatnot. So his first question is, should all management be done in the managed switch? such as DHCP, IP assignment, QoS, etc. It seems to be the place that will allow it for the most control. And yes, a switch's sole purpose is to control data traffic, to shape the traffic. And you can go and buy a router that allows you to do VLANs as well as QoS and whatnot, but for the most part, they're not going to be as good as getting a proper managed switch. The software in it is usually better. So yes, use a managed switch in comparison to a secondary router. Now there's two ways of doing this. Number one, you can keep the Starlink router as a bridge between your internal LAN and the external internet and allow it to provide DHCP services. In other words, if a device comes into the network, it says, hey, that device needs an IP address and it will hand that IP address out. In this situation, if you have a generation one Starlink router, you just simply connect a cable from the auxiliary or your ethernet port on the back of the Starlink router directly into your switch. Now, if you have a generation two Starlink router, 
Well, at that point, you need to purchase a dongle. Everything seems to be dongle-fied these days, like Apple and whatnot. Anyways, you would need to purchase an Ethernet adapter. So you would run a cable from your Starlink Generation 2 into that Ethernet adapter, and then a cable from the Ethernet adapter directly into your switch. That's one way. The second way of doing is by completely removing the Starlink router altogether out of the mix, either by replacing it or by placing the router into bypass mode or bridge mode as what I call it. Once you place it into bypass mode, now the Starlink router no longer does DHCP and you would need another device to do it. The next question is, do I connect the Starlink router into the managed switch first? I believe I can handle the static IP assignment in the switch. Also, DHCP would happen there in this case as well, right? Yes, absolutely. You connect the Starlink router directly into the switch. The switch is always right after your Starlink router or right after the router that you're going to be using to bring in the internet. Why? Because that switch is going to be shaping your traffic. You don't want to do anything with that gateway that brings the internet in and allows the information to go out. That switch is your hub and you want it to get it as close as possible to the actual bridge between your local area network, your internal network, and the external, which is the internet. His next question is, so far I find the Starlink Wi-Fi to be just about the same as my current TP-Link Wi-Fi in terms of range. Do I keep the Starlink router as a Wi-Fi point? So you can, but you do not have to. You could place the Starlink router, like I said, into bridge mode or into bypass mode and allow another device to be able to perform DHCP services in your network. And the Starlink router would simply act as that connection or gateway between the LAN and the external internet, like I said before. Or what I do, you can keep the Starlink router in the mix and allow the Starlink router to be used as DHCP and also to provide Wi-Fi to your local area. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm allowing the Starlink router to provide Wi-Fi 2.4 as well as 5 gigahertz locally, internal to the studio. Whereas all ground traffic, as I call it, traffic that's going over cat cables or cat 5, cat 6, cat 7, Seven, cat 8, whatever, any type of ground traffic is going to be going through the switch and not through the Starlink router itself. Once again, the router I use for Wi-Fi traffic. Why? Because I find that the Starlink router is good enough for the size of this studio. I do not need another router. So I use Starlink once again for Wi-Fi and I use the switch for all ground traffic. His next question is kind of a follow-up. He said, in that setup, do I have to use the bypass Starlink Wi-Fi router bypass mode on the Starlink hardware generation two is what he has. I assume leaving this on is saying that the Starlink router is the DHCP server. Is that right? That is once again, 100% right. If you flip your Starlink router into bypass mode, what that means is it will not provide DHCP and you will need another attached device to handle DHCP and hand out IP addresses. If you leave things alone like I do, then the Starlink router will be in charge of providing IP addresses to all devices on the network that need them. His final question, if I want to use the TP-Link Wi-Fi router, would I then plug that into the managed switch? Good question. Or should the Wi-Fi router have to be the second item in line after the Starlink router and before the switch? I want control over IPs as well as QoS so on and so forth, all in one location. That is a fantastic question and it comes full circle to what we were talking about earlier. If you want complete control over the traffic, bandwidth shaping, if you want complete control over the in and out of data from your LAN, from your local area network, out to the internet and back, you need to have that switch as close to that bridge point as possible. So if you're using a generation one, then you're going to plug your switch directly into the auxiliary port of your Starlink. 
If you have a generation two, you're gonna plug your Starlink into that adapter and then plug that adapter directly into your switch. That is it. The only other way that we can do this is taking the Starlink router out of the mix completely and now installing your own router. My suggestion is if you want to remove the Starlink router out of your setup, make sure that you purchase a good router, a two, $300 router, not a piece of junk because the router that they give you is pretty damn good. So you want to purchase a Wi-Fi 6 AX type of router that has really good security, a lot of QoS built into it and whatnot. Even though we're not going to use it, it still has a lot of good functionality and it has that higher speed and better security than one of the AC routers, for example. Definitely Wi-Fi 6 AX. Remember that, very important. Matter of fact, in the comment area below this video or in the description, I'm gonna put a list of devices that I currently use for my Starlink setup. Check them out. If you wanna go and look at any of them, I'll put my Amazon links there. If you use any of them, I get 25 cents for you doing it. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> but I'll put them all in there so that you will have access to them to just go and check them all out. He finalizes by saying, I also plan to do a Wi-Fi mesh network at some point. Great videos on that too, by the way. I appreciate that. I do have a pretty good video talking about mesh networks and how to create them using the Starlink router. Maybe I'll put a link over here. You can probably see what that thumbnail looks like. Um, once again, go back to that playlist, the Starlink playlist, and you will be able to find that. Just search for mesh or something. You're going to find that in there. It's pretty detailed. And once again, it shows you how I created the mesh network that I'm currently using internal to the studio, external to the studio. I did testing and distances and APs, which are access points and multiples, outdoor, in all this kind of stuff. So definitely check it out. We'll put a link probably here, here, there, I don't know, somewhere. Anyways, these are just awesome questions. I wanna thank you for them, number one. Also, I wanna say that I think that these questions will help other people out, and that's why I wanted to do an actual video on answering these questions for you. And if I see other questions that are really detailed like this one, I'll probably just do a video on it instead of me answering them in the comment area. And then only a couple of people are going to get any value from it. So by making a video, hopefully I'll be able to touch a lot more of you. Also, keep this in mind. Networking is different from system administrator to system administrator to system administrator. No two networks are alike. Yes, there are certain structures that a lot of admins like myself will follow so that the next admin can look at it and be like, okay, I get it. That being said, there is no two networks that are exactly the same because people do things different and you can shape things different by how you put it together. A perfect example is, is let's say you're creating this network for a building and that building is three stories high. Let's just say, for example, and you have a sales department and a technical support department and an accounting department, let's say, and you want them to be able to only talk to each other and they're all on different floors. So on one floor, you have tech, support, and then you have your sales on another floor, and you have your accounting on another floor. Well, that's very easy because they're all physically on different floors and you could have different switches and then have one managed switch that allows cross traffic, okay? But if all three of these different people are all on different floors, so you have sales on first, second, and third floor, and you have some tech support on first, second, and third, what happens at that point, all of their packets need to get an ID so that when someone from sales sends out a packet, the managed service says, hey, this is a sales packet. Let's send it this way. Or, hey, this is a technical support packet. Let's send it that way. You see what I'm saying? So there's different ways of doing this for different use cases. So once again, not all networks are going to be the same. If you have some other ideas and different ways to answer some of these questions in the comment area, put them down here. 
I am not a master guru. Yes, I do Cisco routers. I do a lot of fiber stuff in the NOC and the network operations center and whatnot. I don't use a lot of this TP-Link stuff. I do a lot of Cisco stuff. So I buy the TP-Link so I can show you guys how to do it on lower cost devices. Obviously, I can't say, hey, go get a rack mount managed Cisco switch and I'll show you how to put, that's not gonna help you any. And you're definitely not gonna be doing fiber when we're talking about inside of a small studio like this. Everything is gonna be copper, right? Anyways, guys, put in those comments area any kind of questions that you have, any other ways to build the network that you want to tell DDoc here, put it down there. Let's have this discussion. Let's share. That's what this channel is all about. It's not me preaching and just talking to you, talking down on you as like some guru that knows everything. I do not. And I learn from you guys as much as you learn from me. Anyways, if you enjoyed this, even in the least, please throw this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends, family, colleagues, or anyone, maybe on Reddit or something that might need some Starlink information or Starlink help. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, please subscribe and click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. If there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.